What's up you guys, welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to be doing a introduction to Rx Swift. So here we are on the GitHub page for Rx Swift. If you're not familiar with what the heck this is, it's basically a reactive programming framework for the Swift language to build iOS apps. So very similar to Combine by Apple. It's the notion of, you know, your UI updating reactively to your data instead of doing this weird dance of, you know, reloading your UI uh, manually. So a lot of you guys have asked for it. So here it finally is. We'll do a basic introduction with the table view and actually updating it reactively. So if that all sounds good, get started by absolutely smashing that like button down below. It helps out tremendously. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and into iOS and Swift. That all said, let's get into some Rx Swift in your iOS apps. Let's go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project here. We're going to stick with the app template under iOS and let's go ahead and give our project a name of intro to Rx Swift. Make sure your language is set to Swift, of course, your lifecycle UI kit and your interface storyboard. Go ahead and continue, save the project wherever you'd like. And the very first thing we're going to want to actually start by doing here is closing Xcode because we want to bring in the dependency for Rx Swift. So we're going to bring that in via CocoaPods. Go ahead and open up Terminal. And we want to CD into the newly created project folder. And I'm going to go ahead and initialize CocoaPods by running a pod init command. If you don't have CocoaPods installed on your machine, you can do a quick Google search how to do it because it's fairly trivial. Let's go ahead and open up the newly created pod file here and we want to bring in two dependencies related to Rx Swift. And the first one is super creatively called Rx Swift and we'll copy and paste it and the other one is called Rx Coco, capital C. Make sure you go ahead and lowercase both of these P's here otherwise you're going to run into some terminal errors. Once you've done that go ahead and close that up and you can run pod install here to bring in those dependencies. It takes a few seconds the first time you run it but in my case I've done it before so it's fairly quick. So let's go ahead and open up the project folder and we'll have a newly created XC workspace. Go ahead and open that up and let's get directly into the code right after I expand my window here and select a simulator. So basically Rx Swift, like I mentioned earlier on, is a reactive approach to writing Swift code. So we're going to be creating a table view uh, without the delegate and data source. We're going to use Rx Swift to facilitate, you know, our actual UI being reactively updated. So we're going to want a model and a view model. I'm going to stick them right at the top here so we can have everything in the same file to be nice and uh, organized but the first thing we want to do is first uh, import and that is not how you spell import we want to import rx swift and we also want to import rx coco and let's go ahead and start creating our objects. The first thing we want is a product. You can use whatever type of model you want. And I'm just going to put two things on it. The first thing will be a image name and the second thing will be a perhaps title. The next thing we're going to want is a view model. And this is where some of the uh, actual Rx stuff starts to come in. Let me actually call it a product view model to be a little better about naming. The first thing we want on here is a collection of items. And it's actually going to be of type publish subject, which takes in a generic, which will be a collection of our product itself. And we're going to add parentheses to uh, create an instance of it. Now, bear with me. We'll talk about this in a moment. The next thing we want is a single function on here, which we can go ahead and call fetch items. And this is basically going to, you know, in a real world application, you can perhaps get this, uh, these items from core data or an API call, but we're basically going to create a collection in here directly. And we're going to stick that into the, uh, the uh, items we declared right above. So let me go ahead and just declare a couple of these. I'll go ahead and copy and paste it for the sake of time. We're going to be using SF symbols. That's where I'm grabbing these image names from if you are curious. So you can go ahead and grab uh, Apple's symbol names. I'm just going to go with the ones I can remember off the top of my head. And we'll just go ahead and uh, change up these titles respectively as well. Let's see, flights. This one I can go ahead and call profile and let me not screw that up profile and this one I guess can be settings and now that we have this collection here we want to tell our items that 
the next uh, collection for this was going to be products and then we want to tell our items on complete so items is basically the publisher which is going to allow the observer whoever's binded to it to basically get notified that the data has changed and we've completed the data change hence this on complete and now all that's left to do is actually set up the table view but stick with me here because the way that this is going to be set up is different than normal table views so we want a couple instances on our controller to start with and the first one of course is going to be a UI table view. You can create it either programmatically or uh, via storyboard, whatever floats your boat. We'll do it programmatically since it's, I think, simpler personally in my opinion. So go ahead and create that and just give it a return here. We want to go ahead and also register a uh, cell with it and I keep spelling that wrong. We want to register a cell here. We're not gonna use a custom cell. We're gonna stick with a pretty vanilla table view cell for the time being and we'll give it a cell ID of cell. Now that we've done that, we actually want two more things on here. First, we want an instance of our view model. So I'll create our product view model like that. And we want one more thing on here, which is kind of weirdly named. It's gonna be called a bag and it's gonna be a dispose bag. So let's look for a dispose bag and create an instance of that. This is something that comes from RX Swift and we'll use it momentarily. So cool, now at the top of view to load, first and foremost, we want to add our table view to the uh, view hierarchy. We also want to give this guy a frame. So I'm gonna say its frame is view.bounds. And then we want to bind uh, our table data. So I'm gonna do that in a separate function just to keep things nice and clean. And this is where the RX Swift magic comes in. So we basically wanna do three things in here. First, we want to bind our items to the table. Then we want to bind a model selected uh, handler. And then we want to fetch our items via the view model. So this concept of binding is basically telling the UI that, hey, this is a data that is related to you. So take, take a look at this data and if it changes, go ahead and update yourself. So binding is a fairly common thing in a lot of other languages and even on Android, frankly, as much as it pains me to say it. So we're gonna go ahead and say view models at items and we're gonna wanna say, we wanna bind this to something. Now, this is gonna give you a whole lot of uh, options for autocomplete. So let's stick with the first one and we'll write it out ourselves. We wanna bind it to the table view Rx and we want to bind it to items. And the one that we're looking for here has a cell identifier and a cell type. So the cell identifier will be our cell um, string that we specified up above. And the cell type is going to be UI table view cell dot self. Now we're not quite done yet because there's also a trail enclosure here that we're going to need, which is going to take uh, three parameters, a row item and cell in and go ahead and hit that for autocomplete. And I'll actually go ahead and fix the indentation here as well. So it doesn't look as ugly. Give me one second. All right, looking much better. And I'll go ahead and line break that as well. And we're actually not done here. At the very end of this, we also want to say disposed by bag. And this is where our bag thing comes in. So let's talk about what these few lines are doing. So we're saying the view models items, go ahead and bind those to the table views items off of this Rx property. Here's the cell and here's the type. And in here, we can actually take the model, which is this item, maybe I should call it model, and actually configure our cell with it. So this is basically what you would do traditionally in the cell for row at index function. So here I am going to assign this as the model.title, and then I'm also going to assign the image view on here. And you might be wondering, how does RX Swift know that the cell has this image view and table uh, text label, I should say. The way it knows is because we've specified that that's the cell type. So if you use a you know custom cell, you uh, would just change the type there and RX Swift can basically infer based on the generic type, uh, what type of uh, you know properties are available. So there is our image and our text configuration. And then what is this dispose by thing? So if you actually get rid of this and you do a command B, you'll notice you're gonna get a warning here. And this warning is basically saying that this actually returns, this bind returns a result. And it's saying it's unused, but we don't actually care about the results. So we're gonna say, go ahead and dispose it in this dispose bag. And I would say that's the extent that you probably need to understand that. 
So that's actually all you need to do to start getting your uh, data to bind. Down here, we're going to do this really quick, which is view models. And we have that single fetch function, which is pretty simple. And let's just do this before we actually give it a run. So because we're not using the traditional delegate and data source functions, we want a way to actually get the selected item out of the table view because it's kind of relevant and pretty important. So we're going to go off of the table view.rx and we're going to find model selected. And this basically tells you, you know, what type of model do you want to listen for? We're going to listen for product.self. And I believe we can just do that. And what we care about is the on next. Every time uh, that you know something is selected, we want to bind it to an on next. Go ahead and hit enter for autocomplete, and you'll see that this will give you the selected product back. So what I'll do for our purposes is I'm just going to print out product.title. And just like we disposed of the result up above, we want to dispose this the same way in the same bag. So you can copy and paste that and you'll be good to go. And that's actually all you need to do to set up a table view in Rx Swift. So let's go ahead and give this a run. I'll talk through it one more time and then we'll wrap this up. So wait for my simulator here and we should see a table view with the few items that we've supplied here. Everyone cross your fingers. I think my simulator is just being slow and there is our table view. So not only do we have the images, but we have these as well. And let me go ahead and open up the console here with a command shift Y. I'll go ahead and expand this so we can actually see it a little better. And before I do that, let's go ahead and select one of these. And you can see we are printing out the appropriate uh, element. And uh, that's basically how you create a table view in Rx Swift. So the, the approach here and the benefit of Rx Swift is every time this items changes, um, whether it's via this fetch or you know an API call or core data read, the table view will automatically update itself so you no longer have to do that weird dance of, okay, let me fetch data, then let me call reload data, which can lead to a whole slew of complexity and issues. So using reactive programming is a little subjective. It might be new to you. Uh, it's becoming more and more popular with things like Swift UI and even Apple's own combined framework, but this is the basic premise. So it's not too complicated. We still have a model. We still have a view model. The only difference is we have this publish subject, which is the collection of models. And then we are using this on next and on complete functionality from Rx Swift to specify, you know, the binding data has changed and then we bind the data itself to the table view here. So it's not too crazy. And I would even argue that this is probably the same amount of code as using a table view data source and delegate. Um, but the nice thing is we don't have to conform to all of that and add in three different functions to get this functionality. So this is, like I said, a pretty basic introduction and primer to Rx Swift. A lot of you guys have been asking about it. Uh, if you enjoy the video and haven't done so already, don't forget to smash the like button down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're into iOS and Swift and want to continue to see my daily uploads. And comment down below. Let me know, do you use Rx Swift? What are your thoughts on combined Swift UI? Would it be valuable to see more reactive style videos? I really want to make things that you guys actually want to see and enjoy. That all said, thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.